Now, I want to address something else. I've been having this conversation with my CMO back and forth about crypto. What is crypto? How can it be classified? Is it legal? Is it considered a Ponzi? Or by definition, would it be considered a Ponzi? And I want to arm you guys. And since this is also public, I want to arm all of you when you're approached with this question. From a, um, <clears throat> from a uh, what, what's the word I want to use? Uh, devil's advocate perspective. First and foremost, crypto is not made up out of thin air. A lot of people ask, what is backing it? This is made up out of thin air. Everybody likes money, right? This People love money. This is a piece of paper. It used to be backed by something. And that something was called gold. It used to be backed by something. Which meant everybody had gold. The government wrote laws stating that you had to turn in your gold. And in return, you would get this piece of paper. And the paper even said on it, gold-backed note. The government took it off the gold standard in 1971, but the government kept the gold. You kept the paper. Highway robbery. So at that point, what was back in the money? It wasn't gold. It wasn't property. It wasn't real estate. Only one thing was back in it. Something called Trust in the United States government. That's the only thing that was backing it. Trust in the government. And without trust, we don't have an economic system. And the trust is not just from the people. The trust has to also come from the merchants. It's got to come from the banks. Everybody's got to play ball for it to work. Then comes crypto. And this is what I still think people are not getting. Crypto is not money. <laughs> Crypto is technology. Is a house money? Is property money? Is an art piece money? Is a stock money? No, they're assets. And assets can rise and fall in value. So what determines the value of an asset? What determines the value? One thing determines the value of an asset. What somebody else is willing to buy it for. Stocks. What determines the value and the price of a stock? What the public is willing to buy it at. If Facebook says, uh, my stock is worth $200 and there's nobody willing to buy it at $200, it's not worth $200. Stock price comes down until there's people willing to buy it maybe at 50 bucks. When a company comes out, they come out with something called an IPO. Initial public offering where it allows people to buy stock in the company. The value of that stock is the value of the company based on the performance of the company. If the company performs, they have customers. In the crypto space, coins are created through a process, not just made up out of thin air. Well, you know, I'll give you two examples of how coins are made. First, through a process like Bitcoin, meaning that just like gold, is gold just lands in your lap? Or do you have to take time, 
buy equipment, dig in the ground. Maybe you're lucky to find some gold, pull the gold up, process the gold, mint the gold, and then sell the gold. That seems like a whole bunch of steps. So just the work of creating it creates value because it's rare. Not everybody can do it. Bitcoin, how do you get Bitcoin? I'm not talking about just buying it. It's a process of creating it. Just like gold, except you're doing it digitally. It takes people, time, buying equipment, using energy, programming, and there's no guarantee you're going to actually find any Bitcoin. But you're not finding or looking for Bitcoin. You are building the blockchain. And the blockchain is being used to keep account of the ledger system of all transactions. And when that blockchain fills up, the reward, the incentive for people to do it is Bitcoin. So out the gate, I got to remember what the last price was. I think I think one Bitcoin just to make one in that process cost maybe three to four thousand dollars energy. Price. What, what do you think they say? Why does Bitcoin cost energy? Because it takes energy to make it. It's not made up out of thin air. So now you have Bitcoin, this rare item. What gives it value? Supply and demand gives it value. If it comes out at 0 0.003 cents, can it rise in value if nobody buys it? No, because there's no demand for it. What makes Amazon so valuable? Because people like me go on their website and purchase something. This is going to be my, my reading for the next couple of days. What would the Rockefellers do? I come home and it's waiting for me because it was shipped to me. If there's people willing to buy what you're selling, the value of whatever you have goes up. That's not a Ponzi. A Ponzi, by definition, like a money game, like gifting programs, is where you're taking new money to pay old money. And there's no product or services in the middle of there, anything taking place. Ponzi in crypto is when a company comes in, throws a compensation plan, and then acts like Bitcoin or any type of crypto is the product. That's a Ponzi. The crypto itself is an asset that goes up and down in value based on an individual's willingness to buy and purchase. If the company is crap and doesn't have any real world value, then the value of that token is going to be down because there's nobody demanding to buy it. If the project is solid and goes up in value because people want to buy it, then the value of the coin goes up. It's like digital stock. I know for some people it's hard to kind of wrap your head around that. Especially if you've been part of the system for very, very, very long and you think, you know, the government's going to shut everything down. Money changes and the definition changes, which is why you can't look at crypto like money. You need to look at it like software. You have to look at it as an asset. ICO is another word for IPO. So I hope I, I, I make this clear for those of you who, if you're ever asked the question, what makes this not a Ponzi? And it's really even hard when it's decentralized, not controlled by anybody. See, if it's not controlled by anybody, well, the definition of a Ponzi is somebody's getting the cut at the end of the day. But if there's no, there's, there's no centralization, there's no government, there's no business, there's no CEO, who's getting the cut off of trying to create a Ponzi? It's open market. 
the financial system in the United States before the 1860s used to be this way, where there was multiple currencies allowed in the United States. The only thing not allowed was for a state to create their own currency in competition with the federal government. But businesses, corporations, and people were able to mint their own money and gold, and it be recognized. For those that don't know history, and you just read or listen to uh, Hamilton, the play, there's a part in there where Alexander Hamilton is the is the writer for uh, secretary for George Washington, and he's writing to Congress. We need we need resources now because now the only the merchants are only accepting British pences. They weren't accepting other forms of currency because back then there was multiple forms of currency. It's kind of like how crypto is now today. We're going back to that. And if you know history, you know why the federal government stopped allowing that, that you could only use United States currency because they did not want to have foreign interference from other governments and other powers around the world that wanted to have influence on United States politics by sending in their money and their own version of money that was not tied to the central bank. Alexander Hamilton is the first secretary of state who brought in place the U.S. central bank and created the debt system in the United States. But before that, it was a completely different ballgame here. We're actually going back to the, where it was with the founding fathers before Alexander Hamilton. It's good to know your history. Know the history of money. Know how it works. Because money is not just in this form. There's many different types of resources. So when you're looking at crypto, you got to look at it from a technology point of view. It's not about the coin or the token. It's about the use case. What is this project? What does this coin represent? And what is it trying to do?